स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया today's lecture in today's lecture i am going to continue our discussion on hamilton jacobi equation which we started in the last lecture and i am going to talk about specifically how to solve the hamilton jacobi equation for a special class of hamiltonian problems okay so before i do that i want to continue our discussion so let's recall what is our hamilton jacobi equation this is an equation through which we were able to solve for the generating function which leads us to the symplectic map between one hamiltonian system to the other so recall the hamilton jacobi equation was of the form uh, del phi del t plus h of uh, t comma q bar comma del phi del q1 to del phi del q n okay set equal to 0 where uh, where my phi is my generating function which gives us the simply the symplectic map we are after and h is our hamiltonian hamiltonian in the original frame of reference that is t comma q bar okay so let us uh, continue this discussion on the solution to this equation i have an example to begin with so the example that i have is i'm going to continue our numbering of the example starting from our previous lecture so this is example 6 so the example that i am going to discuss is that of harmonic simple harmonic oscillators okay so in this case the lagrangian for the simple harmonic oscillator is as follows lt comma phi comma phi dot this is also equal to ml square phi dot square by 2 minus mgl 1 minus cos phi okay so uh, the moment we have so where this is the contribution from the kinetic energy and this part of this function is the contribution from the uh, so this is my kinetic energy and this is my potential energy of the system so note now the next stage of solving uh, the hamilton jacobi is to write the conjugate variables to determine the conjugate variables we have p which is del l del phi dot this is a problem with one variable one dependent variable phi so del l del phi dot the only phi dot appearing is in kinetic energy will give us to be m l square phi dot right and and my hamiltonian my hamiltonian is the sum of the kinetic plus the potential energy so my h of t comma uh, phi comma p is is m l square uh, well l square phi dot square by 2 plus so sum of kinetic plus potential energy 1 minus cos phi now notice that we have the variable p instead of phi dot so i am going to replace phi dot from the from the expression above phi dot is p divided by ml square from here i get the expression that h is that h is p square by 2 ml square plus mgl 1 minus cos phi okay so then what we have is so my hamilton jacobi equation Uh, from here it's quite easy to find this will be equal to uh, now i am going to 
write down uh, the equation in terms of capital phi note that this phi this phi in the argument of the hamiltonian is the angle and this phi here is not to be confused with the phi here this phi is our generating function so students should not confuse uh, between the two phi's so hence this is written in a slightly different notation so del phi del t plus the hamiltonian the hamiltonian now in the hamiltonian i am going to replace p by del phi del phi del uh, del phi del phi so this the phi in the numerator is the generating function and the phi in the denominator is the angle phi so now i have the hamiltonian as follows so so i have 1 by 2 ml square times del phi del phi square plus mgl 1 minus cos phi uh, this is also equal to 0 okay so then uh, so we see the, so the next step involves the solution to this first order differential equation note so two observations because before we find out the solution first of all uh, as seen in the previous lecture the hj equation is a first order first order differential equation right so it's a non linear differential equation and and later on we will see that uh, this equation is easier to solve it's easier to solve provided we are able to separate out the variables provided variables variables are separated right and we are going to talk a lot about this topic uh, later how to separate the variables and solve the hamilton jacobi equation right now i am going to directly give my answer to the hamilton jacobi equation in this example students should check that the answer here is phi of t bar comma q comma alpha where alpha is our uh, alpha has been we have replaced uh, the the capital q coordinate in the generalized momenta framework by alpha which is a constant it comes out to be well uh, well i guess uh, well how about uh, how about we uh, well, let's go back a slide so we have this equation that we want to solve and uh, at this stage i am going to leave at this stage i am going to revisit this problem in in a few minutes uh, and at this point i am going to say that we will look at how to solve later for this problem uh, instead uh, let me look at another example and we continue this discussion arriving at a point where we have to solve for the hamilton jacobi equation so we will we will solve we will solve this uh, a little bit later okay so uh, so let us let us continue our discussion with another example the example that i am re i am revisiting the examples that i introduced in my previous lecture so this is on the case of geometric optics right so recall i am going not going to write down the functional etc but recall that the hamilton jacobi equation in this case was the the so called econal equation which we introduced this was del phi del q1 so this is in this is in 2d so del phi del q1 plus del phi del well this was square plus del phi del q2 square plus del phi del q3 my q3 was the independent variable t that we described earlier so square is equal to n square where n is the refractive index okay so this example was again introduced in my previous lecture and i introduced that this equation is the so called uh, econal equation of geometric optics okay 
Okay, so, so first of all uh, from physical considerations we have that the right hand side the refractive index is always greater than equal to 1. 1 corresponds to the refractive index of, uh, of, uh, of vacuum uh, or air uh, well of uh, vacuum. So, that is the base index. So, we assume uh, so we assume that my refractive index my refractive index n is greater than equal to 1. This is purely due to physical consideration okay. and uh, further further we assume we assume a particular form of the refractive index so that we are able to solve this equation assume a particular form a particular form of n we assume that n is of the form mu times square root q1 where mu is a constant and taken to be greater than equal to 1 now further since n is greater than equal to 1 we assume also that q1 my first variable in the, the first coordinate q1 is also greater than equal to 1 okay so that is again coming from the physical constraint here so well for this problem i do have the solution again i am not going to show how to solve the problem because i have devoted the solution to the hamilton jacobi equation uh, in the later half of this lecture as well as the next lecture so i am going to write away uh, write down the solution to this this uh, example uh, the solution is uh, t phi of t comma q bar comma alpha uh, is is uh, 2 by 3 mu square uh, times 2 times mu square q 1 minus alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square uh, 3 by 2 plus q q 2 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 t. Now, all what can be done is students should check that this indeed satisfies my equation. So, this is indeed a solution to this equation. So, please verify this. So, please verify that this is indeed the case. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can check certain properties of this uh, function. Namely, first of all we can check whether this solution is complete or not. Namely, we have to construct a determinant and uh, sorry construct the matrix or the Hessian matrix and find the determinant of this matrix whether that determinant is non-zero or not. Okay. So, what I want to do is we want to, to check to check completeness completeness uh, I find out the matrix M which is my Hessian matrix del 2 phi del del q i del alpha j. So, there are two sets of vectors one is the coordinate variable the other is the set of unknown constant parameters right and this is a 2 D problem. So, this is a 2 D problem I expect the matrix to be 2 cross 2. So, all I have to do is find these Hessians I have the direct answers uh, I will write the answer directly because all I have to do is substitute phi and take the necessary derivatives the answer is as follows I get the answer as uh, negative alpha 1 by a alpha 2 by a and 0 1 and where my a is the following expression this is mu square q 1 minus alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square. Okay, where uh, so where my determinant you can see that the determinant of m is uh, is well we have again we have 1 here and 0 here. So, the determinant of m here is uh, alpha 2 by uh, a. So, this is non 0 if if my constant alpha 2 is non 0 and and uh, the square root of a is well defined right. So, the we are talking about real valued solutions. So, the square root should be well defined 
so so once that is satisfied once uh, once we put uh, these two sets of constraint uh, we can directly find out our extremal solutions q1 and q2 from this generating function phi so so it implies that my hamiltonian solution or the extremal hamiltonian solution uh, is given by beta k where beta k is our constants is equal to negative del phi del alpha k right this is from our pre uh, result in discussed in the previous lecture so from here i get that beta 1 is negative del phi del alpha 1 and i have i have an answer for this right away uh, so all these answers should be checked by the students by taking all these derivatives so it turns out to be alpha 1 a by mu square minus q2 and beta 2 is minus del phi del alpha 2 this is also equal to alpha 2 a by mu square minus t okay i see that i see that from here i invert this relation to find q1 and q2 and i see that q1 turns out to be so q1 now is a function of t comma alpha comma beta both are vector vector constants this comes out to be mu by alpha 2 whole square times beta 2 plus t uh, again the the purpose for giving the solution is that students should verify that these indeed are the solution to our hamiltonian system or the extremal solution to our hamiltonian system and q1 q2 of t comma alpha bar comma beta is alpha 1 by alpha 2 t plus beta 2 minus beta 1 ok so at this point i have just shown some examples as to how to come to a point where we have the hamilton jacobi equation and further for certain cases how can we solve well we haven't shown how can we solve but once we have the solution to the hamilton jacobi how can we derive the extremal to the hamiltonian system so the next set of discussions will involve how to solve the hamilton jacobi equation namely we are going to see the solution of the hamilton jacobi equation for a specific class of hamiltonian system known as the conservative functions or conservative systems okay so let us see what is what do we mean by conservative systems okay so this is a special case of or special class in which the hamiltonian satisfies certain properties okay so when i have the hamiltonian which does not depend on the independent variable when the hamiltonian does not depend on t explicitly when the hamiltonian does not depend on t explicitly we see that we we have arrived at the conservative system now we have certainly seen uh, we have certainly seen few examples in this category namely uh, the cases which involved beltrami identity which did uh, in which the integrand did not contain the independent variable x so uh, so that was one case uh, so uh, in this class we sh it turns out that the moment h does not depend on the independent variable it is easy to show that h so the hamiltonian is described by h so h is constant is constant along any extremal it's constant along any extremal right okay so we will now see the solution to this class of hamiltonian system now let us write the hamilton jacobi equation so in hj equation uh, so the variable t can now be separated the variable t can be 
separated separated uh, from from the generating function generating function phi hat right so which means that if we are given the hamilton jacobi equation del phi del t plus now h is a function purely of q bar comma p bar given equal to 0 see that in this equation the only function of t will appear here in in del phi del t right so we can always from here uh, we can say that del phi del t is equal to minus h of q bar comma p and let us say that they can only be equal where one of them is independent of t the other may or may not contain t they can only be equal when they are both a constant let me call this a constant f of alpha right if that is the case i know that phi is phi is phi of t comma q can be directly integrated to show that this is negative f of alpha times t plus some constant psi uh, which is q bar comma alpha right so we can see the solution to our hamilton jacobi equation in this class of problem uh, is such that the variable t can be separated out right okay so so uh, so we have solved for this relation now also notice this relation so the second relation implies that h of q comma p is f of alpha right so the hamiltonian is constant along the extremal uh, q bar the q bar is the extremal right so this is constant along the extremal constant along the extremal q bar of t comma alpha comma beta okay and then further uh, further we can in our generalized coordinate further we can simplify by identifying one of the coordinates with this constant so this constant is special uh, because uh, this will help us to reduce our uh, hamilton jacobi equation so so what i said is the following further further uh, simplify we can further simplify in generalized coordinates in the coordinates capital q in generalized coordinates right by identifying by identifying uh, one of one coordinates by identifying one coordinate uh, coordinate q n to be equal to alpha n which is f of alpha so we identify one of the coordinate to be uh, f of alpha the constant itself right so so let us now look at uh, so so what do we have here we see that uh, so so now i want to write uh, the so so in this particular case we have a special form of hamilton jacobi equation namely the reduced form right so the reduced the reduced hamilton jacobi equation where my hamiltonian does not depend on the independent variable is is the following h of q bar comma p is equal to h of let me write it down q1 comma q2 comma qn comma p1 comma p2 comma pn these are all the generalized vectors well these are all the vectors in the original frame of reference this is also equal to f of alpha or in in terms of the new uh, coordinate this is alpha of n right we have just introduced that right so alpha of n is f of alpha okay now further further i have been saying that wherever we get momentum uh, the momentum variables we always replace this by del phi del q right 
So, we replace p i by del phi del q i because that is the relation uh, for the generating function in terms of uh, the conjugate variables. Note that, so, so note, so what is my phi? My phi is the solution to the original, to the original Hamilton Jacobi equation and we saw that phi was equal to psi of q bar comma alpha minus f alpha of t, right. We also saw that, uh, so which means that del phi del q q i will be del psi del q i because the q variable only appears in this function psi. So, this means that we have to replace p i's by del psi del uh, q i. Okay. So, my reduced my reduced Hamilton Jacobi equation now reads as follows. I have that h of q bar comma del psi del q 1 to del psi del q uh, n is equal to alpha n. So, for this the solution is the solution is the function psi of q bar comma alpha, right. So, the solution to the reduced Jaco Hamilton Jacobi equation is psi. Note that the, the function psi which is appearing in the original, so psi is also the function which appears in the original solution to the original Hamilton Jacobi equation, but it is the solution, this function psi is the solution to the reduced Hamilton Jacobi, right. So, what is it, what is the relation between the original Hamilton Jacobi and reduced Hamilton Jacobi? It turns out that the function psi uh, which appears which appears in the original mind mind us that psi is not the solution to the original Hamilton Jacobi, it only appears there. So, is but it is the solution to the reduced Hamilton Jacobi or the Hamilton Jacobi corresponding to the conservative system, ok. Ok, so, so then some of the other issues to talk about is how about the completeness of this solution, right. So, it turns out, it turns out that the solution, the solution psi, psi to the reduced, the reduced Hamilton Jacobi equation, the reduced Hamilton Jacobi equation is complete, is complete provided, provided m which is given by del 2 psi del q i del alpha j uh, is non-singular, right. The same, the same uh, idea that we had shown for the general class of Hamilton, solution to the general class of Hamilton Jacobi equation, ok. Uh, so, it turns out that for this reduced case, it is psi that we are after. So, psi is our generating function. So, this is our uh, generating function to the reduced Hamilton Jacobi and, and uh, so psi produces the required symplectic map, produces the symplectic map which is s from the original coordinate q bar comma p bar to, to the new coordinate capital Q bar comma capital P bar, right, which, which transforms, transforms the Hamiltonian, which transforms the Hamiltonian h of q bar comma p bar to h hat of q bar comma p bar, right, ok, which we have said that this is equal to our generalized coordinate q n, right, ok. So, which means, which means the following, from here we can see what is my, what is my Hamilton's equation. So, in generalized coordinate, 
in generalized coordinate when i say generalized coordinate i talk about coordinates which are capital q capital p right my hamilton's equation will provide the following set of constraints i see that the first set of hamilton's equation is qk dot is del h hat del alpha k well del h hat del p k and note that uh, note that q k dot will be 0 for all k except k equal to n right uh, well not q k dot but p k dot sorry so let me just write down the two sets of equations and then we can infer our conclusions so q k dot is this and p k dot is minus del h hat del q k right so notice that since h hat is not a function of p so this will be 0 and but h hat is definitely a function of q n so this is 0 if my k is from 1 to n minus 1 and it is 1 it is well i see that this is 1 with a minus sign so minus 1 if k is equal to n so from here i can derive the fact that my q k's are alpha k so constants so these are my constants and my p k is beta k if k is beta k is another set of constants from 1 to n minus 1 and otherwise it is also equal to beta n minus t for k for k is equal to n right so for k 1 to min 1 to n minus 1 I get the constants otherwise it is beta n minus t for k equal to n okay so we are ready to look at uh, examples in this class of uh, systems in this system of uh, in this hamiltonian system of conservative functions uh, well the, so before i do that let me just summarize the solution strategy or how to find the solution for this class of problems So, solution strategy for finding for finding uh, extrema extrema of the Hamilton uh, well Hamiltonian system right we start with we start with solution of reduced reduced hamilton jacobi equation we start with the solution of the reduced hamilton jacobi equation right and then uh, the generating function once we have the solution to the reduced hamilton jacobi which is psi the generating function of the original the original hamilton jacobi equation is phi which is psi minus alpha n t right and finally uh, finally once we have the original generating function we can derive the extremals from our relations as follows so so the extremal the extremal q bar is obtained obtained by solving by solving the following set of equations that beta k is minus del psi del alpha k where k is from 1 to uh, n minus 1 and my solution beta n is minus del psi del alpha n plus t right the the nth component okay so from here i can get my extremal so let us look at some examples for this conservative system 